Like, how did that feel, Pat? We kind of spanked you on that shadow. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, good looking. Welcome to another episode of I Don't Have Any Money, and I'm not about to drop my cell phone payment to buy the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction Palette. So if that sounds like you and you're interested in some single eyeshadows, makeup brushes, and sunscreens, make sure you subscribe and let's get into it. So I have down here a palette of some single eyeshadows that I put together with some special shades over here, but it is six shades from Cindy Grace's um, palette and then four shades from just indie brands that I have in my collection that kind of dupe the vibes or, you know, Know, what I'm using instead to kind of put that mothership taste or craving to a side. Um, okay, <laughs> I haven't done one of these videos in a while. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kendra Morgan, official and I put our content uh, regularly, weekly, usually, weekly, usually. I had to take a break, but I'm back. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what I'm using instead. Today I'll show you guys the six Cine Grace bundle that you can choose and then four shadows that you can buy in place of the Moonlit Seduction palette. And I bet you anything you'll still have money left over from that $128. I can't really guarantee you that, but um, this is what I'm using instead. So let's get started. And um, the first shade that I'm using actually in this palette to dupe the vibes of the Moonlit Seduction Palette is Hidden Treasure by Sydney Grace and it's kind of got this like yellow shimmery shade to it and kind of gives that nude feeling. By the way, I will also be putting some official swatches that I like to do and then I'm going to feature this eye look as well. So just hopefully this all works out. Yeah, let's get let's get going. <laughs> I don't even have the shades. I don't have the shades wrote down. Oh man, this, like when, when will I learn to write it down before I get on screen and start filming? Anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about. I know the most important shade, VR Sex to See, so we're good. The rest of them doesn't really matter. Okay, so the first shade, it's like nude skin, nude show, whatever, you get it. For the second shade in the palette, I chose, so we'll go through the six first and then we'll go through um, the four special shades. I chose Honesty from Cindy Grace. This is a little bit more peachy in tone, a little bit more nude, not as pink, but I know that the general consensus is that we've already got enough pink in our collection from all the previous Mothership palettes maybe that we've purchased or just other singles that we already have in our collection. So we don't need any more. And I chose kind of more of a nudish. This is more tailored to fit my skin tone, whereas I don't feel like pink looks very good on me. Then for that gunmetal gray, um, pistoli looking shadow, I put in there uh, Tierra by Sydney Grace. But also I do want to bring to your attention that if you have the Radiant Reflection I am using, one of the shades already i'm using unstoppable love so throw in phosphines for that it's a really good um comp shade it's just going to have more of a taupey lavender undertone to it but it would work really well in place of that gunmetal gray so just also let you know if you already have like radiant reflection which i know many of you bought the temptalia collection so you already have this i have the light version by the way um then you would already have two of the shades that would be for your what you're using instead palette but i'm using tiara i'm throwing it in you guys know it's one of my favorite all-time favorite shadows and it is one of three shades that actually has kind of like a textured really highly metallic foiled shimmer to it i should have put it up against the um the phosphine shade because that one would be it's really good to see against it but it's kind of one of those it's semi like foiled it's not the regular metallic formula and this is the other one that they have but let me go ahead and show you guys unstoppable love is the the hemtalia palette in place of that it's it's in place of her orchid shade i don't remember what it's called but 
Anyways, this is more of a purple and it's got more of a plum shade to it. But again, I felt like we've already seen the orchids and the pinks and the really, really like heavy, heavy pinks. We don't need to see any more of it. So we're interested in other stuff. This is um, in place of the bronze shadow in the six, you know, unspecial shades, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> I don't know what to call him. <sighs> What a spanking we're giving Pat McGrath here with these special shades from Indie Brands. But anyways, let's keep going. This is um, the second one, and it's kind of that, like, see how it's got some texture to it? It's high luminosity or high luster. And you can really see also I'm going to be putting up here in the swatches um, the the formal swatches so you can see how they compare to one another but it's got it's one of three bronze to perfection tiara and I think it's the copper shadow blaze from the Cindy Grace collection singles that really is like very very highly um, high shine and I know that kind of outdoes and outshines and outperforms Pat McGrath but here we are let's do it anyways for that darker um, it's it was something plum like deepened plum or dark and rich plum or something like that. I chose the shade Grounds by Sydney Grace. It's not quite as plummy, but it's really the struggle that I felt in finding shades. This is where I struggled. Sydney Grace doesn't offer as deep of shadows as Pat McGrath does. I've got my little reference palette here. It's the um, Midnight, Moonlight, Midnight, Midnight Sun, there we go. And she has some really dark, dark, deep, anything but black kind of shadows that I really like and crave. But do you see, this is so much darker than the plum ground shade that I put in place. So really I needed something with this depth, but being a plummy shade, and this is as close as I could get it. Um, there might be something deeper on the website that I don't already own. However, this is what I have, so that's what I put in place of it, so. Okay, let's move on to the four special shades in my collection here. And the first shade, I think this is probably the star of it all, is Mystic Moon Pie from Davina's, I think it's her dual chrome specialty collection, but she does feature it. And it is just divine. It gives the sparkle, it gives the attraction it gives the feeling like you can buy into this fantasy of moonlit seduction without ever buying the palette in my opinion you see that okay so that's um that's in sh place of the vr sex to see i do know that one i happen to remember it off the top of my head so we can see I've got some really, really good like one-up shadows. <laughs> Let's keep going and check out the remaining special shades that I've got. I have Roses Remix from Give Me Glow Cosmetics and it is just a divine, awesome, high, like the mirror type of foiled shadow. And you can see on the actual swatch, the formal swatch, it's almost like you can see a reflection in it. It is so gorgeous, it's so beautiful. It is very, very tricky to work with though. I will say there's a lot of fallout. Um, not for the faint of heart, it would not be beginner friendly, but nonetheless, a really, really um, outstanding shadow to have. And I really enjoy it. Then I chose this shade. It's actually probably like quite overkill as far as the, you know, duping the vibes goes, but it is the shade Lynx from Davina's, I think it is her Star Chasers collection, and it has a shift of a green in there. However, the dominant shade is a pink undertone with a yellow shift over top. And that's what I was really looking for when trying to find a gold shadow that kind of gave the similar vibes. This is what I came up with, probably the farthest away from a gold that you could think of, but nonetheless, extremely, extremely special. Um, and you can just see that right here in the swatch. 
Okay, lastly, I use JD Glow's Sin. And really, honestly, you could use AKA, you could use Sin, and then there's also a third one that I can't think of off the top of my head, but it's in one of my, um, one of my BYOPs that I made and put together. It's it's a more of a bubblegum pink. So if you were looking for less iciness and more bubblegum, you would go with that shade. And I can't remember what it's called, but nonetheless, I chose JD Glow Sin. I wanted a very faint pink, just like in the Pat McGrath palette. And then I wanted kind of that icy sheen. This outdoes it by giving you also a little bit of that green duochrome shift to it, but if you were looking to outdo yourself in a what I'm using instead, you would probably go for a shadow like Sin from JD Glow. Okay, that is it for my palette. And I just kind of try to like get you guys close and involved in the selection of the shadows. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how I got this ethereal moonlit seduction eyeshadow look. Dust some of this honesty into my crease using a Makeup Geek soft dome brush. Mm, I'm not really, I guess I am a dusty mauve person, but not like super dusty, not too much pink undertone. And I think this honesty shade gives me just that. Yeah, I decided to go with two different, like one that's kind of a more muted peachy pink and then one that is more on the purple orchid side. So that way there's maybe a little bit more variety within this palette. I know that that's her signature is the pinks, but I gotta tell you, I'm not a pink fan myself. Not without having like a nice brown to really ground things out. So here we go. There's Honesty, it's buffed into the crease. Worked just fine. Let's, you know, like I said, let's ground it out with some brown in it and dipping into, I think it's the shade Grounds by Sydney Grace. I always like to show me dipping into the palette. Don't ask me why, but that's just what I do. <laughs> so hopefully this kind of remains neutral and not too pink. Every look that I've seen so far has been extremely pink and my objective here is to get you to want to not buy the palette and go with the singles that you already have. So it's behoove of me to sway you from, you know, a look that looks too terribly much like what you would find in the Pat McGrath palette. Tapping this in and just kind of placing the shadow. I will say with Sydney Grace, I'll be completely transparent with you. With Sydney Grace shadows, um, the darker the shade, it tends to be a little bit patchy for me and it might also just be uh, my lack of attention to detail and my impatience, but I do find that I have to blend more with them and they can go kind of patchy on me. So grabbing my concealer brush from Makeup Geeks, um, closing lot. I don't know what you want to call that, but anyways, it's the last brush that she had just grabbing and pulling that up and around so that we have a nice seamless blend, but kind of a smoky, we've got structure. We've got structure for, for all you folks. We've got structure here. Maybe too much. There's too much back out and grab some honesty and then I'm just going to blend just a little bit more into um, that outer V and kind of give it a little bit more pigment. See there's a little bit lacking in here at least on this side there is and a little bit on this side as well. I want to fill it in with this shade. Yeah this is more orange uh, undertoned 
So not really, again, what the Pat McGrath palette has to offer, but definitely an alternative that you might be interested in. And I'm also noticing that I'm using the lightest shade in my palette, so there's not really anything else I can use to blend any of these other shades out with. Like I don't have anything to blend this upwards. I want to special or structurally put in some of this um, skin show, mood glow, whatever Pat McGrath calls it. And it's pretty much always the same like var variety of it, but it's this uh, highlighting shade up here. And for mine, I can't. It wasn't Milk and Cookies, but I it was a heavy contender. Hidden Treasures. So Hidden Treasures. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pinpoint some of that high up on the brow bone for me. and probably uh, hit a little bit of that inner corner as well. And because it's got a little bit of a skin-like undertone, like a yellowy skin undertone, not my undertone, but a somebody's undertone, yellow, uh, golden, you can almost kind of flare that out in that inner corner the way you would really want to see a shade used. And it looks definitely kind of ethereal, so hopefully that kind of competes with the shadow. Just tapping that in there and again using that MAC 242 shader brush. Let's dip into some fun shades, okay? So we've got four uh, special shades in the Pat McGrath palette and I used four special shades from indie brands that I have in my collection. Roses Remix. I wanna use this and then at the very end, let's see what the Davina Mystic Moon Pie can offer or maybe even the Vela shade. Is that Vela or Lynx? It's Lynx, sorry. I don't know why I said Vela. <sighs> okay, so for the Roses Remix, you have to either A, put it on with your finger and I'm telling you in a very delicate manner you would grab some of this shade like this and you can see how much reflect how much luster you have um, one might think that that's excellent and amazing but I'm going to tell you right now this is the recipe for a lot of fallout and I don't like fallout I some people are like oh I don't mind it well I do so grabbing my spray picking up a little bit of that on my brush and pick it up before you spritz your brush okay that's the secret you will you will pick up some. Spritz your brush. This essence has ferment in it. <clears throat> Not ideal. All right, let's go ahead and place some of this on the lid here. And I think you can already see where I'm coming from when I say this brings a lot of shine and a lot of luster. Now the brush is damp. I'm still, I'm picking up with the same amount of dampness and I'm tapping off any excess. And I'm just gently adding some of the pigment. I'm almost gonna go over that Sydney Gray shade just because of the high luster and intensity that the Gimme Glow shade brings. It's almost as if that Sydney Gray shade Hidden Treasure doesn't really provide much of a, a highlight anymore. So I am going over it. So that, that was a bad idea. And then I'm just feathering this out so it almost gives this like textured look, I guess if you will. I actually can't stand that Sydney Gray shade. All I can see is yellow, and I don't have a yellow undertone, so it doesn't look very good on me. But there you go. Now you know. Buff and blend a little bit of the um, un Unstoppable Love out of the Temptalia palette. I'm 
let's buff and blend a little of that underneath and then I'll curve it around so that there's some purple within the eye look using the MAC 217 brush. So I, I'm just forewarning you, it's a magnificent shade. I don't regret it at all. I'm just going to back out here with this concealer brush and just kind of give it a light buff around the edges. Um, but I will say that, you know, when you, when dealing with those types of shades, you always sacrifice something. And for this particular shadow, we are sacrificing ease of use for sure. <laughs> oh, yes. But well well worth it oh see <laughs> already got the mica flex it's not an actual glitter it's a mica it's a mica fleck type of thing all right so we could leave it here put on some mascara which i will do and i'll show you the look and it can be almost an everyday wearable look or we can go ahead and jump into another special shade and add a little bit more. Let me just kind of buff and blend this in. Not sure this is like 100% what I love, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to grab some of this Mystic Moon Pie on my ring finger right here and I'm going to tap it. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Mm. I'm going to grab some of my ABH glitter adhesive and uh, tap some of that all over the lid. And then I'll put the Mystic Moon Pie on top of that. So just grabbing a little bit here. Still keeping um, that Roses Remix. Or is it Glamorous? Ooh, it's Roses Remix, yeah. Um, in the in the inner portion as like kind of a highlighting shade, but I do want to make sure that I get some of this Mystic Moon Pie covering it and um, fading into it. So let's do that. Oh man, I think I put, I think I took a bunch of that off. That ABH. I don't really like it very much, but it's like what I have to use. I lost my NYX glitter primer. Like, how did that feel, Pat? We kind of spanked you on that shadow. <laughs> like, ooh, that's not good. I mean, it's good for us because we like the indie brands, but... All right, and just kind of tapping over and then into this area right in here. And I'm actually tapping like quite high up into the brow bone area. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm feeling it. Let's do it, let's do it all the way. And then just bring it down. And up and around, there we go. And that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some lashes on and then we will see you on the other side. Hope you guys are enjoying and finding value in this content. If you are, make sure you subscribe and like this video. That's the look that I did for the for my Moonlit Seduction, what I'm using instead, and I, I like it. I can't complain. Um, this really was a good trial run for me to see and find out that no, I don't think I would actually like to own, I, I would not find gratitude in owning the Moonlit Seduction palette, mainly because of those pink shadows. I really took some liberties when, you know, substituting out some of the shades that were pink for a more peachy nude tone. And then also the orchid, I went more plum and not so orchid shade, um, which is the biggest gripe I think with this palette that there is. And um, also I have to say, I'm not really a huge fan of the Hidden Treasures. I don't know if it's Sydney Grace's formulation. It's like a satin, it has that duochrome vibe. I know Makeup Geek has a shadow like this, it's called Prism. And I've used it a couple times. It has more of an orange yellow, so I would actually probably reach for it over um, the Hidden Treasures. So, you know, that's that. <laughs> 
I would have to say I chose the six shadows from Sydney Grace brand exclusive for you guys if you were putting together a bundle or just to kind of show you um, using my reference palette the moonlit no this is not moonlit seduction this is midnight sun I found that the Sydney Grace eyeshadow formula was closest to the um, six shades that were over here it's the closest to Sydney Grace probably um, they're a little bit harder pressed not too hard but they are a little bit harder pressed and they're very vibrant um, and generally they do perform a little bit darker on the eyes than they look in the pan and that seems to be true into the case with Sydney Grace as well so that's kind of why I chose those plus you guys seem to like the Sydney Grace collection as much as I do so Hopefully that helps you guys in selecting some shadows from your collection. Let me know in the comments down below what you would choose as your four special shades. And I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.